which he had taken with the tongue from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, Lord, send me. Glory to God. How many persons are saying today, Here am I, Lord, send me. When Jesus was on earth, he gave a great commission to his apostles. He said, go ye into all the earth and teach all nations. The Lord sent them out to bring the good news of the gospel, to tell everyone of his righteous kingdom. Before Jesus came, there was a man called John the Baptist. And the word of God said he was a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for his feet. And today, as John the Baptist cried concerning the first coming of Jesus to this earth, when he was born as a babe in a manger. Thank God he, he was born, he died, he rose again, and now he's sitting on the right hand of his father. And we know that Jesus is coming again. And because he's coming again, those of us who are called by his name, there is work for us to do. But there are many hindrances, many things that stand in our way that prevent us from answering the call of God. Sometimes we answer, but we answer half-heartedly. In Isaiah 6, we, we, we just read this passage of Isaiah the prophet, one of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament. It is said that the book of Isaiah is a miniature Bible. 66 chapters. The first set of chapters spoke about judgment. The first 29 chapters. But the, the other 27 chapters spoke about the hope of the coming Messiah and the kingdom of God. Isaiah is called the Shakespeare of the Old Testament. Shakespeare was an English writer and poet. He wrote beautiful words. And in the book of Isaiah, we see beautiful words. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God the everlasting father, the prince of peace. This is Isaiah. He spoke such beautiful words through the spirit of God. But we notice in this passage that even a man as great as Isaiah, there was some hindrance that prevented him from doing God's work in the way that it should be done. And so in this passage we read, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. How much we need to see Jesus today. We need to see him in all his glory. We need to see Jesus in all his greatness. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. He was high. He was lifted up. His train filled the temple. And the angels cried, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord. The whole earth is full of his glory. And that is what we want to see today, the glory of God. We want to see God in his glory. We want to see God in his splendor. You know, it was Ezekiel who used the metaphor. He said when he looked, he saw the water. And it was just at his feet. Then the water rose to his, uh, to his knees. Then it came up to his waist. And then the water came up all covered him. And the word of God speaks that the glory of God 
shall fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. And that's what we are looking for as believers. We want the glory of God to fill our lives as the waters cover the sea. Some of us today, we are just to our ankles. Some of us may be to our knees. Some may be to the waist. But we want the overflowing. Amen. We want God to flow over us. We want the Holy Spirit to fill us. Amen. We want God to pour down upon us. The word of God said on the day of when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the people of God were in one accord. They were in one place. And there came upon them cloven tongues of fire and filled the place. They spoke in other tongues the mysteries of God. They glorified God. The people standing around, they said, these men are drunk. But others said, others said it's too early in the morning for them to be drunk. They were not drunk with wine, but they were filled with the Spirit of God. And this is what the Apostle Paul says to us. Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Today as God's people, we become drunk with the wine of this world. The things around us, the material things. But today we want to be filled with the Spirit of God. Peter got up and he said, ye men of Israel, all you that are here, we are not drunken as you suppose. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in the last days he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. He said, the young men shall dream dreams, the old men shall see visions, and upon his hand made on, he will pour out of his spirit. Do you want the outpouring of God's spirit today? Amen. You need to answer his call. And you need to ask, what is the hindrance in my life? What is it that is preventing the outpouring of the spirit of God? Now Isaiah saw God in all his splendor and in all his glory when King Uzziah died. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In order for you to see God in all his glory and in all his splendor, in order for you to experience the riches of the Lord, the eternal riches, the spiritual riches, you, you need to get the hindrances out of the way. Now let us look at this man, Uzziah. He was a great king that ruled in Israel. And we read about him in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And in verse 5 it says, And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord God made him to prosper. This was Uzziah. And later on we read in verse 8. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. And his name was spread abroad. Even to the entering of Egypt. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. So this Uzziah was a great king in Israel. He was a mighty king. As long as he sought after God, God blessed him. And so it is today, as long as we seek for God, God will bless us. He said, when you shall search for me with all of your heart, I will be found. And so we read on, we see Uzziah here, that he conquered many. He was strong. He 